Ohio, the odds are you can go out and get a pretty damn good job and make it into the middle class. That is not the case today. Today, in many ways, a college degree is the equivalent of what a high school degree was 50 years ago. So I believe, I believe that when we talk about public education today, what we've got to be talking about is making public colleges and universities tuition free. And it is not only for kids who want to go to college. There are a lot of very bright people who are not academically inclined. They want to become carpenters and plumbers and sheet metal workers. They need the education to do that work as well. And then we have to deal with this outrage of student debt in America. You know, we say to the people of this country, education is important. Get as much education as you can. And then they find themselves thirty, fifty thousand dollars in debt, paying off that debt for decades. That's crazy stuff. And that is why we are going to significantly reduce student debt by allowing people who are paying off those loans to get the lowest possible interest rates they can find. Now, people say to me again, they say, Bertie, you're thinking too big. You want to make public colleges and universities tuition free? You want to make sure that kids who don't go to college get the post-high school education they need to be good craftspeople. You want to lower student debt. Do you know how much that costs? It costs $70 billion a year. And that's true. It's an expensive proposition. But you know how we're going to pay for that? If this Congress could bail out the illegal behavior and the recklessness And when we do that, by the way, we're going to create millions of good-paying jobs in sustainable energy, in solar, and in wind, and other areas. Now, during this campaign, I get criticized a lot. And one of the areas I get criticized on is my views on health care. So let me be as clear as I possibly can so my critics get it exactly right. I plead guilty. I do believe that health care is a right of all people, not a privilege. Please, to my critics out there, please don't tell me that somehow or another it is okay for every other major country. Go to the United Kingdom, health care for all. Go to France, health care for all. Germany, health care for all. Holland, health care for all. Scandinavia, health care for all. Fifty miles from where I live in Burlington, Vermont, is Canada. Health care for all. Now, how can every other major country provide health care to all of their people, but somehow we can't? I don't believe that. I believe in a Medicare for all health care system. you to think what that means. What does it mean to have a Medicare for all system? It means that you don't have to stay in a job you don't like because it provides you decent health insurance. It means if you want to start a small business, you can do that and not worry about health insurance. It means 
if you're a small business person, you don't have to spend half your life worrying about how you're going to provide health insurance to your workers because they are going to have comprehensive coverage. And I'll tell you what else it means. It's not just today that we got 29 million people who have no health insurance. It's not just today that many of the people here are underinsured with high deductibles and co-payments. It is also that we are being ripped off big time by the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. I hope everybody here knows that the drug companies can double the price of your medicine tomorrow, that they are charging us by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. You want to hear crazy? This is crazy. One out of five Americans who go to the doctor, get a prescription written, they can't afford to fill that prescription. That is crazy. And that at the same time, last year, three major drug companies made $45 billion in profits. Well, the days in which the pharmaceutical industry can get away with murder, and by the way, I use that word advisedly, because there are people in this country who die because they can't get the medicine that they need. I'm elected president. Those days are going to end for the drug companies. Now, all of you know that real change never takes place from the top on down. It always takes place from the bottom on up. It always takes place when millions of people stand up and fight back. As somebody who has a lifetime voting record of 98% with the trade union movement, I know the struggles that workers have gone through in order to form unions and engage in collective bargaining. As somebody who has one of the strongest civil rights voting records in the Congress, I know the struggles that African Americans and their white allies have waged forever to make sure to end racism and bigotry and discrimination in this country. As somebody who has one of the strongest voting records for women, I know that a hundred years ago today, women in America didn't even have the right to vote. But women by the millions and their male allies said that in America, women will not be second-class citizens. They organized and fought back. Change always takes place from the bottom on up when millions of people look around them and they say, racism and sexism and anti-worker policies are not acceptable. We're going to change that. And that's where we are today. Millions of people are looking around this country and they're saying, why are we the only country that doesn't guarantee health care to all? Why are we the only country that doesn't have paid family and medical leave? Why are we the only country that forces workers to work for eight or nine bucks an hour rather than raising that minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour? Why do we continue to have institutional racism and a broken criminal justice system? Why, why, why? And what millions of people are saying, it is unacceptable, the billionaire class cannot have it all. We're going to fight for real change. And that is what this campaign is about. Now, one of the arguments made against this campaign 
is people say, well, you know, Bernie Sanders, nice idea, nice guy, nice ideas, but he can't win the general election. That's wrong. That is factually incorrect. And I would, all of you, take a look at all of the polls, almost all of the polls that have been taken over the last several months. Last national poll done by NBC Wall Street Journal, Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. Sanders wins by 18 points. In virtually, in virtually every single poll, we beat Trump by a larger margin than does Secretary Clinton. So if you want a candidate who will defeat Trump or some other Republican, you are looking at him right here. But it is, it is not just the polls. In my view, the American people will never elect a president who insults Mexicans, who insults Muslims, who insults women, who insults African Americans. And I want to say a word on this because some people have forgotten. Donald Trump, several years ago, was one of the leaders in the so-called Bertha movement. You all know what that's about? Don't underestimate what that Bertha movement was about. That movement was a very deliberate effort to undermine the legitimacy of President Barack Obama. That's what it was. It wasn't saying we disagree with Obama, that's fine, people can disagree. It was lying and saying that he should not be president because presumably he was not born in the United States, a lie. Now, I find it very amusing that my father was born in Poland. I'm the son of an immigrant. Barack, o Barack Obama's father was born in Kenya. He is the son of an immigrant. But I find it rather strange. Nobody has ever asked me for my birth certificate. Maybe it has something to do with the color of my skin. Now, we together will defeat Donald Trump because, because the American people fully understand that bringing our people together, black and white, Latino, Asian American, Native American, gay and straight, men and women, bringing our people together will always trump separating us and dividing us up. American people understand that community, understanding that we have got to reach out and help each other. You've got to help my kids, I've got to help your kids. That that will always trump selfishness. And most importantly, the American people understand what every religion in this world has always taught us, whether it is Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, whatever religion, and that is that at the end of the day, love always trumps hatred. Now, the story of this campaign is that we win elections when the voter turnout is high. We lose elections when the voter turnout is low. 
I hope very much that tomorrow here in Ohio there will be a massive voter turnout. I hope very much that Ohio will be one of the states to lead this country forward toward a political revolution. Thank you all very much.